so, um, I, you know, I've been saying to the Open Medicine Foundation and other researchers to look into environmental factors for a while, but I want to make a video where I give you some really concrete demands rather than just saying look into environmental factors. Um, I don't want you to just study mold. Like I've said a million times before in my videos, which I'm not sure if you've watched, mold is shorthand for a variable or various variables in the environment that we don't 100% understand. Um, it's not just garden variety mold. There are theories behind it, like mold combining with nanoparticles or pollution to become more virulent. And there's some evidence for that, but mostly it's just this wide open question as to what it is we react to. And I think that starting with a big data approach and starting with an open mind as to what it is in the environment, what the variable is, is good. I mean, of course you should look for mold, but you should look further. So that's my first demand is that you don't just look at mold. You look you cast a really broad net and deep into environmental factors in general. Various particulates, metals, um, types of smog, uh, not just PM 2.5 or whatever the most common uh, measurement of air pollution is, but perhaps smaller particles, microplastics, um, and mold, and various biotoxins including cyanobacteria that's in soil and as well as uh, lakes. Um, then also look for mycotoxins, not just mold spores, look for spore fragments. And anyway, that's one start. Another demand is that you bring on to the OMF team a microbiologist or scientist that is studying this stuff. You could bring on someone that is studying the effects of air pollution on neuroinflammation, but also there's a team that published a study in PNAS recently, um, nanoparticle decoration of uh, fungal spores, that is a really good paper. I think they're from abroad, but I would very much like if you could reach out to that team. There's, um, and I can give you their contact info. Um, third, there's another team, um, I think from UC Davis or Irvine, that did a study um, on these nanoparticulate bursts of fungal spores in uh, like, uh, I think some kind of low pressure systems or at, called atmospheric uh, fungal nanoparticle spore bursts or something like that and um, you could collaborate with the people behind that to study mold more like it is in the real world not in the lab like under various atmospheric conditions etc um, so I know that studying environmental stuff is a big undertaking but I think this is it, that's not an excuse for not doing it. Um, the other thing is to study CCI and to do work on pathology um, stuff, not just whether patients have CCI, there should be a study on that with upright MRIs, but also uh, biopsying the ligaments if they do have CCI, biopsying phylum if they do have um, tethered cord and to do some of the studies that Ron is doing um, on various kinds of cells but on these cells um, if you can and maybe to develop new types of assays for um, looking at connective tissue um, cells that might be different than the uh, white blood cells you're looking at um, and just for their my like final demand just for there to be some kind of process of 
I know you have transparency in that you tell people what you're working on, but re reciprocity and accountability to patients, like maybe you should have patients on the board. They have given so much money to your organization and uh, they, I don't think they're getting back um, this sense of, any sense of like urgency, like um, I'm desperately ill, I do not feel served by any of the uh, current scientists um, as valuable as their work might be, they seem to really brush off our concerns. Um, oh yeah, and I guess I forgot, like one final thing is a demand is for you guys to be involved in aggressive advocacy. I realize that you might think it might hurt your position with the NIH, but the NIH is throwing us only crumbs and throwing you only crumbs already. So I think that uh, if you were involved in advocacy and activism fit to an extent that, you know, met most severe ME patients can't be, like protests and stuff like that, and protesting in Congress and getting your foot in the door there, um, that would be really helpful to furthering your research and allowing you to do some of the research you say you can't do because of funding.